final score, Wrexham 1, Southend United 0. And this is a game that, well, maybe the actual description of the match won't take long. It wasn't pretty, but although we found a pretty controversial way to win in the end, it was huge. Difficult conditions, difficult opposition, but we still found a way, albeit a slightly dubious one as we'll get to in a bit. But I think it's telling that Phil Parkson and Ben Toza both were effusive in their praise for the team and delight at the performance. Toza going as far to say it was better than the brilliant performance last Tuesday. And I can see why, because this was a big, big, big three points. So, unchanged from the side at 1-4-0 at Dagenham. But really, the pre-match story was that this match surely wasn't going to go ahead. Incredible work by the staff at the racecourse to get this game on. They were at six in the morning removing the snow from the covers and the pitch was playable. It was sticky, though. And, and who would be surprised at that when it's been under the covers, certainly the goal areas, since the start of the week. Um, and it didn't help us to play. Now, it's as if for both teams in the south end are a passing side, and I would say they passed the ball around a bit better than us, to be fair. But, yeah, it, it did hamper us a bit. And in terms of goal opportunity creation, this game was pretty barren. Wrexham started superbly. First five minutes, Wrexham and South End penned in. They did what Chesterfield did and switched the ends around so that we'd be attacking the empty cop in the second half. And for the first five minutes, it looked like we'd do to them what we did to Chesterfield in the first half and annihilate them. However, they hung on. And in fact, despite intense pressure, we didn't really carve out any chances. There were a lot of scrambly moments in the penalty area for South End, but we weren't able to work the goalkeeper. When... The game started to settle down. The pattern was that South End were keeping possession without threatening us. And in fact, this is one of those games where really you look back at it and realise that this is one of the easiest clean sheets we've had all season, despite South End's domination in terms of possession. Wrexham were looking sporadically promising in the first half. I stopped short of saying dangerous, but did make a good chance in the 23rd minute. A free kick from Lee on the right-hand side swept in. Palmer managed to have a free sight of goal from about eight yards out. I was pretty adamant at the time that he should have scored. Looking at the replays, yeah, he probably should have scored. But it wasn't a bad header. He directs it downwards. It's not straight at the keeper. And Arnold drops to his left and makes a really good save, to be fair. So, Wrexham toiling to create. The midfield struggling to really impose themselves. And Southend moving the ball around very nicely. But Wrexham's defence looking rock solid and Wrexham's midfield doing a good job in terms of def defending that defence. The promise really for Wrexham going forwards tended to be through Ryan Barnett who was bursting down the right-hand side with pace trying to take the game to South End. The two strikers were having a frustrating time. And certainly Mullen in particular looked very lively but we weren't getting great service to either of them. In the 30, well, in this, beg your pardon, in the 27th minute, Wrexham had a problem. Tony Cliff going for a header and having a clash of heads, he clearly had cut himself over his eyebrow and had to hold his hand over the injury and sprint off the pitch, staunching the flow of blood to have stitches, one would assume. And that meant he was off the pitch. That led to one of the most gloriously naughty moments of the season, where shortly afterwards Rob Lington gave us all heart attacks when he suddenly collapsed on the edge of the area, holding his hamstring Everybody was mortified, but I'm not totally sure that was an injury, guys. Uh, I think a lot of the crowd cottoned on. There was a lot of giggling in the crowd, and the South End bench were really not impressed. Linton made a full recovery and chewed up a couple of minutes of the six, which we played with ten men. And Tony Cliff was able to come back, and soon afterwards, Wrexham had a half chance. No. An eighth chance, perhaps. Toes are throwing a ball into the box. The ball helped on. And James Jones trying an overhead kick from 10 yards out. Difficult to execute. And he put it well wide. The breakthrough came in the 38th minute. But like I said, it was controversial. Again, Toes' throws, which were essentially our main source to make any sort of inroads into the penalty area. One of them was thrown in. Touched on. Arnold underneath it, what looked like an easy take under his bar. He jumped, caught it with both hands. Mullen jumped, made contact with him, 
and Arnold dropped the ball into his own net. Now then, at the time, I just thought, well, that's going to be disallowed. No, the referee gave it. South End apoplectic. Surprisingly, they got one yellow for dissent, complaining about it. Oh, I've watched it back from all the angles, everything I can find on the internet. Um, people are disagreeing about this. Some are saying there's barely any contact on Mullen on the keeper. Um, for me, it's a foul. I just can't see it any other way. Keeper's caught the ball. He's got it under control. He's lost control because Mullen's made contact with him. Furthermore, you know, <laughs> goalkeepers, if you knock their arm, not hit them hard, but knock their arm, you can't hold on to the ball. I mean, think about it. You got, you're holding the ball up. You've got two points of contact. If someone knocks your arm like Mullen did with Arnold and that, arm, that hand just loses contact for a moment, you've lost control of the ball. And when you go through it frame by frame, I mean, Arnold's got it. And then his left hand, after Mullen makes contact with his left arm, not much of a contact, glancing contact, but it's enough. You can see his hands just pushing, his arms just jolted, and that's enough to knock it in there. So for me, it's, it's, it shouldn't count. But it did count, and I'm not complaining. Uh, Wrexham then had to withstand some good pressure from South End. They were clearly angry, and they came at us. And they made, actually, four minutes later, comfortably their best chance of the match. They had their own long throw. Gus Scott Morris, with his corkscrew style, slung it in. It was touched on. A little bit of a scramble. And then it fell to Mooney, about 10 yards out. Central in the box, with a clear strike on goal. There were bodies in the way, but it was a heck of a good chance. But Christopher Ray chased it out from the six-yard box and rather got in his way, put him off, and so Mooney made a complete air shot, swung his foot at it and missed it completely, no doubt distracted by Ray. And Wrexham went up the other end, got another throw in for Toza, and very nearly made it two. He slung it in, touched on by a defender at the near post, Owen O'Connell and Marks at the far post made good contact with the shot, keeping it really well to get across his goal, got something on it and touched it onto the post. It ricocheted back in, found its way back to Andy Cannon, and he drove a powerful shot on target, but a defender standing in front of Arnold sliced at it and deflected it behind for a corner. Wrexham, like I said, looking good from Toza's throws, and we had rather cutely cut little channels. I, I've chosen to call them Toza holes uh, in the snow around the pitch <laughs> to let him have more of a run up. Although Scott Morris used it pretty well. Scott Morris, by the way, I've got to say, and I'm not marking him because I would do this if I, if I could get away with it, and I've had long throw, was, I mean, Toza steals yards for his throw-ins. Everybody steals yards in his throw-ins. Scott Morris was stealing yards because he was trying to get to the Toza holes. <laughs> he was trying to get that run-up. It was brilliant, though, because he was so blatant. And the referee and lines were never did anything about it. Yeah, because people steal yards. But they, they rarely make it so obvious. So he would get the ball. He, he'd go about 10 yards further forwards anyway. A couple of times where I did send him backwards. But even if he did, whether or not, he'd then have a long sprint down the line to build up momentum. It was it was wonderful. I can't I can't understand how he got away with it. After the the chance that they created from that throw, Tony Cliff and Toza had a right go at the linesman for allowing it. I was surprised the ref didn't intervene. And even more surprised that the ref continued not to intervene on the, the, the stealing of yards. But anyway... That's life. Second half, Wrexham started quite brightly and a couple of minutes in, again, had a good chance. Long ball forwards, Palmer won the header well. Lee helped it quickly on and accurately to Mullen. And Mullen did that little thing he does. It's a bit of quality, isn't it? But he just shifts the ball from one foot to the other and puts the centre back in front of him off balance, so which gives him a chance to strike. And he hits it well from the uh, inside the D. Really good save by the keeper going down low to his left to push it away. And that was kind of it, really. There wasn't much else in terms of opportunities. Wrexham was starred with the ball for pretty long periods, but like I said, weren't really threatened that much at the back. The three centre-backs, absolutely terrific. And we made some substitutions to freshen it up. Jordan Davis came on halfway through the second half for Andy Cannon. 13 minutes left, Sam Dorby got a run out in place of Ollie Palmer against his old team. Soon after that, Wrexham actually carved out their last chance of the game, a corner. And we did that thing where we have a pair peeling beyond the far post. This time it was Mullen. Lee swung in a perfect ball. Mullen lost his man beautifully, had time to measure it. But unlike that looping header at Aldershot, he got it wrong. 
and from about eight yards out, he put it well over, much to his own fury. Five minutes left, McFadgen came on for Elliot Lee to tighten things up because the ball players had not had a happy day, really, in all honesty. Now, Lee has always put in a great shift, but Cannon and Lee both struggled, I think, on the surface to really impose themselves on the game. McFadgen went into midfield, the straight swap for Lee, just to stiffen things up. And also because um, Scott Morris was making some interesting runs down the right-hand side, often wasn't tending to get found, but he was asking real questions of Wrexham. And so I think maybe having a, a bit of reinforcement on that part of the pitch would work. And McFadden did win a couple of decent challenges. Also, Dolby did well up front, got, got very little decent service, didn't have much support, but he did have a few good little duels in the air and, and beat the centre-backs and held the ball up pretty well. With three minutes left, Southend carved out a semi-chance. Fonguk feeding it into the box. Davis did really well to intercept, but then gave it away to Hussein, who hit a shot from the edge of the box, but put it miles over. And that was that. And Wrexham clung on, helped by some excellent time-wasting down in the corner by, by Dolby, and, and mostly, who kept the ball down there for a couple of minutes. And a massive victory. The crowd roared like you've never heard. It was a hell of an atmosphere. South End brought 725. There was a good atmosphere between the fans, of course. The South End fans made a presentation to the Wrexham fans before for the support that Wrexham fans have given to them in their hours of need because they've had terrible problems off the pitch, of course, South End. And there was a real roar at the end as Wrexham claimed those three points because it was a relief. It was hard work, but we got there in the end. Performances, I can't rate Layton because he had nothing to do. He... <laughs> There was, like I said, those two chances really all South End had. One of them was a shot that went miles over from outside the box. The other one was an air shot. So the shot, there were no real shots on target for Lainton to deal with. The three centre backs, by contrast, were outstanding. I thought O'Connell is class, isn't he? And he's so calm in the way he uses the ball, but he's also so physically dominant. Uh, I said at the end of the commentary, and I'll say it again. I feel like O'Connell is so. Uh, good that you just you almost take it for granted he was so calmly efficient you just assumed he was okay likewise Tozer was very strong at the back aggressive and and won his fair share in the box and we were penned in but Tunnicliffe every time the ball dropped loose in the box Tunnicliffe seemed to be there to intercept he was man of the match I, I, I would argue uh, really really had a good game and made so many interventions the wing-backs, Barnett did well. Like I said, he, he took the game to uh, South End as much as he possibly could. And so I was, uh, it was a pleasing home debut for him. He, is, he was enjoying it as well. At one point, he went revving the crowd up to make no noise. And he said, that's a good home debut. Left-hand side, Mendy was a bit out of sorts in terms of using the ball. Didn't really get forwards very effectively. Uh, defensively, he was okay. Midfield, well, the standout player was James Jones because it was his sort of game. He made so many interceptions, rolling his sleeves up, getting a foot in. As ever, just kept going for the 90 minutes, just relentlessly, and had a very good game in midfield. Uh, the other two midfielders kind of had a weird game. He started brilliantly, and then the passes just started going astray, and it wasn't quite happening for him. Again, maybe the pitch, I don't know. Maybe that he still has a bit more match fitness to get into his legs. But yeah, he was withdrawn after the second half. And Elliot Lee as well, lots of endeavour, but difficult for him to really have an impact on the game. And up front, like I said, Palmer and Mullin were somewhat starved of good service. They battled hard at what they got. Palmer didn't get as much at the centre-backs maybe as Dolby was getting when he came on. Mullin was lively, but didn't have much to work with, really. As for the subs, Davis made a couple of good interventions. As I said, Dolby did a decent job up front. McFadgen got some challenges in the midfield and did what he was brought on to do. So, it wasn't pretty. But it was great because <laughs> we won it. And that maintains our position after Notts County came back from behind to beat Dorking afterwards uh, of being four points clear with nine games now left. It's another big step towards the big prize with a final score of Wrexham 1, Southend United 0 and Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC. <laughs>